اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Dear delegates, Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. It is indeed a pleasure to see you early this morning. Um, you know, thank you, Jazakallah, for making that effort and coming in on a Saturday morning. It's wonderful. I myself, uh, my name is Naveed Malik. I serve as the chair of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Research Association, uh, which is known as AMRA um, for short. And I, I will do this fairly quickly uh, because we are just uh, running a little bit behind schedule. Uh, I would like to introduce to you what AMRA is, why it is, and you know what, what, what does it actually do. And perhaps, if I have time, can introduce to you the theme of today. Um, so first question, what is AMRA? Okay. So AMRA was established under the guidance of Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih uh, Khamis uh, about six years, six, seven years ago. Um, and we have very simple mission statement. Um, to advance natural and social scientific learning with a view to serving God and his creation. So first thing to note is when we say science, we don't just mean the natural sciences. It's not just about biology, chemistry, physics, <coughs> engineering, mathematics. It's much more than that. So we need people to go into um, social uh, scientific subjects like economics, um, literature, um, archaeology, um, and we, we need that a lot. We, we're, we're quite science heavy uh, within the Jamaat. Uh, but we need people to go into the social sciences as well. Um, the vision which we derive from Hazrat Khalifa al Masih is this. This is our vision statement. In the next 20 years, we will have at least 50 internationally recognized research academics within the UK Jamaat. And this is the important part, that they will be examples of the spiritual scientist. So we're not just looking for people to do really, really well in their research fields and become professors and that's it. We, we don't just want that. We don't just want secular success. We want people who, have, who hold the Holy Quran in one hand and the Book of Nature in the other hand and who see the unity and the symmetry between the two. Because as Akram Ahmed Isa pointed out, that's when you actually end up serving God and benefiting humanity, really not otherwise. So this vision we derive from Huzur, and I'm going to talk about uh, later, um, we, we have a Holy Quran and Science workshop later, uh, about, we're going to talk about this particular quote from Huzur, uh, which I hope you have time to read. And particular emphasis I would put on new research. Okay? So there is something called retrospective research of the Holy Quran, but I think now it's time that we do prospective research, but more on that later. Okay, so what does Amr do? Um, just to give you a bit of a snapshot, last year we had about 15 engagements. Uh, you can see that we do a variety of things, so many things. Uh, I would point out research cafes which are aimed towards uh, so the more research minded and so the, those people who are planning to go into academia uh, from within our Jamaat. Um, and it's essentially a journal club which where researchers within the Jamaat can come together and they can talk about their work. Uh, obviously, everyone is invited to all of our events, by the way. Can I just emphasize that? On each and every one of our events, all Khuddam and Ansar and Atfal are welcome. So it's not just uh, open to researchers only. Um, uh, let me give you an example of the Discovery Zone. For those of you who attended National Khuddam al Ahmadiyya Ishtama, the Discovery Zone was run by AMRA. And that is an example of our outreach-based activities. So we had about 500 people all together over the two days, over the two last days of Ishtama, coming in and hearing interesting talks from our researchers and beyond our researcher community as well. Um, I will talk a little bit more about a few of the activities. So AMRA is divided essentially up into two main departments. So we have the outreach department, uh, which organizes, the purpose of outreach is to get our Khuddam and our Atfal interested in research, to get them knowledge oriented rather than just vocationally oriented to develop that love and thirst for knowledge. So an example of our events, uh, very successful events are Abdus Salam Academies where we go into regions and our researchers set up these workshops for the Atfal where they for example build the fastest car. So they have these pieces of uh, Lego or um, uh, kinetics I think it's called and, and they use design principles to develop the fastest car. Um, we have microscopy workshops as well, 
uh, where people can look at the world at a microscopic level using the microscopes that we provide. Um, we, the other big department which we have is the networking department. And that is more aimed towards um, older students, postgrads, MSc students, you know, PhDs, and beyond. And the purpose of that is to bring everyone together, share ideas, to provide career advice, like we're going to do today in the annual conference, um, and as well, and, and also in the research cafes as well. I'm just going to move on. So we have publications. We're planning to publish our first um, uh, AMRA journal very soon. Um, I'm going to zoom through. We have our website as well, muslimresearchers.org. That is our website. If you want to find out more about us, muslimresearchers.org. Just a quick look at our front page of our website. Um, we also have a publicity department. Uh, you've come to interact with them uh, um, through Twitter um, and WhatsApp and Telegram and beyond as well. Uh, something new which we've started doing is AMRA Talks. Uh, some of you might have heard about it. We've had one event as well. Uh, the AMRA Talks is essentially TED Talks, but for Ahmadi researchers. Again, open in audience to everyone. Okay? Um, and the idea is that we raise the profile of our researchers and obviously enthusiasts as well, who are enthusiastic about research or particular ideas, and raise their profile from in, within the Jamaat and beyond. That what great ideas we have. Uh, you know, within our community, and what good we want to do in the world. And Holy Quran and research, something which now we're beginning to start, uh, and you will hear more about this later, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. So on to the theme of our conference. I will, again, try to go through quickly. Um, in the Holy Quran, uh, if you read Surah Al-Baqarah, um, the first condition of being righteous um, is said to to, to have a belief in the unseen. And in the Arabic, that the word used is ghaib. So what does ghaib mean? It's translated as unseen, but actually it's a word which has many meanings. Does it mean something that you can never see, never hear, never ascertain anything about it? Or is it something different? So at a surface level, uh, if you read the commentaries of the Promised Messiah and the Khulafa, uh, ghaib first of all means something which you cannot perceive with your physical senses, cannot hear, cannot see, cannot touch, and so on. Um, but does that mean that Islam promotes blind faith? You cannot see something or you know, feel it or anything, but you, you have to just believe in it. So that is not true, because just because something is so-called unseen, it does not mean that it cannot be un inferred through reason, and secondly, through revelation. So these are two very important aspects of the unseen. And if something is unseen, it doesn't mean that it will remain unseen forever. So a lot of scientific phenomena, for example, the expansion of the universe, there was absolutely, 1400 years ago, there was absolutely no possibility of observing it or even deducing it. But because of certain technology and intellectual developments, we now know the universe is expanding. We can see that from the redshift of the distant galaxies moving away from us. Uh, and so that is something which has become unseen. Another very important part of this is that if you look at the word for martyr in Islam, it's a very interesting word, it's shaheed. It's someone who witnesses, someone who witnesses, someone who witnesses God. So when someone dies serving Allah in that state, and sacrifices their life. There's a very special word which is used in the Holy Quran which tells us that they reach a point, they have such a high status because they begin to see the afterlife, they begin to see God, they begin to see those things which are unseen even to deductive logic. Okay. I've been told to hurry along a little bit. So with that introduction I would um, finish off uh, with a quote from the Promised Messiah um, and I will read this out. Um, so God Almighty has divided his wonderful universe into three parts. First, the world which is manifest and can be felt through the eyes and the ears and other physical senses and through ordinary instruments. Secondly, the world which is hidden and which can be understood through reason and conjecture. Thirdly, the world which is hidden beyond hidden, which is so imperceptible that few are aware of it. That world is entirely unseen. 
cannot be reached by reason and is pure conjecture. It is disclosed only through visions and revelation and inspiration and not by any other means. What I would like to point out to you is, if you look at the previous verse, whenever Allah talks about um, unseen and seen, alamul ghaybe wa shahada, why does it mention the unseen first and then the seen afterwards, so ghayb first and shahada later? The reason for that is that it is the knowledge of the unseen which gives you mastery over knowledge of shahada, of that which can be seen and which is more apparent. We can see that in our lives as well. So if a person can see things beyond the surface, they are the ones who can actually act on the surface and who can understand the surface better. And that is the beauty of the Holy Quran. And the corollary of that is this, that unless you can access and tap into revelation, as well as deductive knowledge, your mastery of the scene, your mastery of the sciences and the apparent sciences will not be as good. And so your access to revelation and your connection with God will give you that edge over uh, the rest of the world, which the Prophet Messiah السلام, has prophesied that there will be people amongst you who will master all fields of knowledge. Uh, we must not forget that. Okay. So with that, I will end with that term because I introduced this term at the beginning, the spiritual scientist. And perhaps this introduction begins a discussion on what a spiritual, a spiritual scientist means. More to come on that in the Holy Quran workshop later. And I will end with that and hand over uh, to, to the organizers, Mudassisab, uh, while we wait. Jazakallah, Jazakallah.